43 Gratitude Day edition of the Big Book Study Workshop. Uh, my name is Joanne and I'm a recovered alcoholic. I am the presently serving DCM for District 43, which covers the geographical area of Langley, Fort Langley, Aldergrove, and Cloverdale. Uh, Gratitude Day, if you don't know, is an annual event hosted by our local district intended to be a fundraiser for the four levels of general service, that being our district, our local intergroup office, our BC Yukon area, as well as the general service office in New York. This year by group conscience, we decided that all of the proceeds or all of the seventh tradition contributions uh, collected for this event will go directly to the general service office in New York as um, they are in the most need for it at the present moment. So in the chat, I'm gonna put the instructions on how you can contribute to the seventh tradition. Um, we're, we're currently doing it by e-transfer. Um, by sending the contributions directly to our district treasurer at treasurer at district43aa.org. If you need that email address, you can find it in the chat. Um, this hour is dedicated to the Big Book Study Workshop hosted by Tony Roberts and myself um, by way of the Keystone Group, which meets every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. We also have a Women's Big Book Study Workshop exclusively for women um, at 6 p.m. on Friday nights, as well as a Beginner's Big Book Study Workshop hosted by Joe Ski of the Keystone Group at 12.30. Um, and I believe we have a Monday Night Big Book Study Workshop as well. Um, please reach out to me in the chat if you'd like further um, information on how to connect with those meetings. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Tony. Tony, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. I recovered alcoholic. My name's Tony. Uh, sobriety dates April eight, nineteen eighty nine, and uh, and our of course our home group meeting. Uh, we meet Wednesday nights at seven. Great, great group of people. If you wanna ever show up for an awesome meeting, probably one of the best solution based meetings I've been to in, in, in a long period of time. Uh, we carry the primary purpose of Alcoholics Anonymous. So I was just kind of taking a look at the screen here and, and kind of meditating on this thing uh, um on uh, what sometimes you know uh, um for our group purpose right but i was kind of looking at uh, as i was looking at everybody and realized most of us have been around here a while and i don't see is there anybody new to the fellowship of alcoholics anonymous so i, I know joanne is thank you for putting up your hand there joanne so but uh I mean, <laughs> don't unmute yourself quite yet but so, uh, listen, if you have your book, I don't know if anybody has their big book with them. Anybody has their big book with them? That's awesome. And a pen, if you have a pen and a piece of paper, it'll probably be really helpful. But I, as I was meditating as, as, uh, um, uh, and praying for direction here, the thought came of our greatest responsibility as what? As AA members, right? You know, you know is, is a couple things. One is to ensure the message of Alcoholics Anonymous, and two, our, our legacy and all, all levels of service, as Joanna was saying. And kind of like as being a responsible member in that, we get into all three sides. And, and if you're really kind of involved in this thing, it's really the circle. Because when you're living the circle, is our relationship with something greater. We're covering all three areas of service, how we could be uh, dedicated to helping others, right? Not only within the fellowship, but our family, friends, and our lives. And, and we kind of really represent something greater than ourselves, right? So if you go to the first page where it says Alcoholics Anonymous, and, and um, before we get started here, thank you for inviting me, uh, um, the committee, and Joanne. Uh, it's always been a pleasure uh, dealing with you now that you're sober, um, it, it's been it's been it's been a real treat. <laughs> Dealt with her many years where it wasn't so much that, and it's always nice when somebody smiles at you with their eyes as well as their their, you know. There's a difference. A lot of people smile at you and they, hey, you ever see that smile? They smile at you, but their eyes aren't smiling. <laughs> so it takes a little while, right? So if we look at the first page where it says Alcoholics Anonymous, and it talks about the story of how many thousands of men and women, right, have recovered from alcoholism. And this this is the fourth edition. I understand the fifth edition is coming out <clears throat> with the same statement, right? And, and the message stays the same. And it has been the same. 
since and 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 I think it 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 was more tweaked, so it's more palatable from when Ebby sat with Bill and when those people visit Ebby. You know what I mean? And and this thing started taking root and it started to 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 kind of to uh, um uh, flourish. That there was something here, and 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 when you kind of understand the story, it kind of makes it really remarkable. A lot of people focus on the the recovered part, right? When when I was going over this with my wife, it was really interesting. Sometimes a different perspective on things can change totally how we look at something. Anybody cool with that? Sometimes when we look at things our own way, we we kind of get stuck or we can't get beyond our own experience. But when we add to that the collective experience of those who went before us and those who were having a different experience and a different view, then we could move past where we're stuck or where we are. It's it's kind of like, you know, if you were kind of standing, if we're all holding hands around a big elephant, right? And we made a big circle, everybody would describe what they're seeing, right? And the people in front of the elephant would have a much better experience than those standing behind it. Right, and then you'd kind of argue that point. Well, that's not what I'm seeing. That's not what I'm experiencing. And if you've just seen what happened here, this is not this is not thrilling at all. But the people who have a different experience says, well, why don't we just shift a bit? Why don't we just move a bit so you can see what I'm seeing? And it's kind of like, wow, isn't that interesting? Look at this, how magnificent it is, and and the ability to stand back from it to get a better scope or better view on the big picture. Right, and and I think that's the biggest challenges of, of of members in Alcoholics Anonymous, isn't it? Is what what's the big picture here, right? Because sometimes we can be very focused on our ideas and our picture, and n- nobody in this fine group, I know that, right? We're struggling how we think things are. So the, the beauty of this thing is that they put together a story. And the story of Alcoholics Anonymous. And and in order to fully comprehend that, I would need to go through it to find out what they're talking about, wouldn't I? Because you could just sit around in meetings and you'd miss the whole essence of this thing. If you were looking for the things that made sense to you. Because you'd look for things from your own point of view. For things that made sense to you. Wouldn't you? Yes. And it'd be a very limited perspective. So here they're saying, we have a whole different painting that might be a little mind-boggling for you. But, but first, let, let's kind of start going through this and talk about what is the story of Alcoholics Anonymous. And so as we... Did you want to add anything to that, Joanne? No, that's great. So as, as we start... If we, if we were to get this in the mail, that's how they used to send it, right? That as we go through this, and you kind of go to the forward here, the preface preface and they kind of tell you what kind of book this is right and it's a basic text and and it tells you what the first portion is about and it describes the AA recovery program whose recovery program it is I'm not too sure of that as of yet just reading this thing but it's setting up the idea that this is a text right and so when we turn over to the forward to the first edition we see who this is put together by Right, and and we see that it's a collective experience. Most of you have all been through this. So I'm just going to hit some highlights of of maybe a different way of looking at this. Right, so we see it's put together by them, for who? For the reader, right? For those who may be or or be afflicted with alcoholism or know somebody who's afflicted with alcoholism. Is the point is to educate those who may be afflicted or know somebody who's afflicted to better understand what the problem is and what our solution is and the course of action is so what i would need to do as the reader or as a as a sponsor having gone through this is pass on the same information as being presented here wouldn't i wouldn't that be my responsibility as as a member of alcoholics anonymous to carry this message not a message, it would be this message. The purpose of me coming to AA was to find a solution to a problem that I fully didn't quite understand that had me stumped. Anybody of the same here? Anybody of the same kind of experience that everything I was doing, I wasn't finding the answers for, and somebody said, why don't you try AA? How many people got suggested to come here by somebody else? Or heard of AA from somebody else? 
Because I know when I sat in the bar, I didn't think, oh, I wonder if there's a place called Alcoholics Anonymous there to help people like me. Like, that wasn't one of those thoughts. It was the people around me that said, I think you have a problem. And I used to think, I think you have a problem. Right? Because I couldn't see what they seen. Anybody like that here too? So we were always the last ones to know that we had a problem. But everybody around of us, around us was acutely aware of it. So here they're saying that these people were, were, were once afflicted with this problem that I have. And they talk about here. Do you want to read that, Joanne? The first uh, paragraph just to set up the idea here. Forward to the first. Forward to the first edition. We'll, get, we'll just get a template of, of, of the premise of what we're talking about, right? Forward to the first edition. We of Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body to show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered. Well, what do you mean by precisely? Does that mean kind of like cafeteria, do what makes sense to you and, and as I see it, recovery? Or is it I need to find out what they're talking about? No, it means that they're going to show us from their own experience. Do I get exactly. to do I get to interpret what that means? No. Or do I need to understand what that means? Well, I, I think it's important to mention that you can, um, but if you want to get the same result, you're probably going to have to follow the precise recipe that they went through. So. One hundred percent. So they're they're saying here. To show their alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. So you, they're kind of saying that they're all in agreement. Here, aren't they? Of what the problem is, what the solution is, and what the course of action is that they all engaged in. So we see it's not a singular experience. It's a collective. And that's what they kind of went, what the first page we read here, the story of how many thousands of men and women who have recovered. Is that a singular experience or collective? No, they confirm it by saying we think this is an account of our experiences. Right? Not not his experience, not an individual's experience. This is a collective um, account of their precise experience recovering from alcoholism. Will help everybody, everyone to better understand the alcoholic. So I need to understand what they mean by that. What is an alcoholic? Well, what I think it means, what I thought it meant before going through this it was all the trouble i got into that made me an alcoholic how many people was the consequences how many people were of that thinking so when you sit in meetings people give you the impression they're alcoholic because of all the consequences but how many people has experienced those kind of consequences sober failed relationships job losses fighting with people places and things so we see there's something but the impairment and driving impaired Right? So the impairment is, is, is the result of drinking too much. I never really thought I drank too much. I just thought if I could stop getting in trouble. Anybody of that thinking here? Yeah. Is there a way I could drink without consequence? That's what I thought an alcoholic was. A person who couldn't stop getting themselves in trouble. If I could just not get myself in trouble, then I won't be alcoholic. Anybody? Because as long as I'm working, paying my bills, and doing all this stuff, because alcoholics don't do that stuff, do they? <laughs> right? Suck it up. Drink like a man. Quit drinking like a pig. Anybody ever hear? And maybe nobody in this fine group. Nobody ever talked to you guys like But then talk to me like that. <laughs> when do you try a bit of water? I am with vodka in it. <laughs> but I mean, so, so right away. So I need to find out what they're talking about in regards to alcoholism in this seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. So how many symptoms are they introducing here as the problem? A seemingly hopeless state of mind and body um, sort of gives us the impression that maybe there might be two, but we don't fully understand what they mean by that yet. Right, and they have a solution for this thing. So as we go into the doctor's opinion, what's this really sets up the whole thing to to this, this magnificent... Uh, um, Text. It's just mind-boggling how this thing kind of came about, and, and, and it's kind of it sets up the story, right? It, it starts, and if you kind of hopefully have good sponsorship, or, or you're working with somebody new, you want to draw their attention to this because this is this is sets up the whole conversation for the rest of the book. What the whole thing is really founded on. 
right? And, and this thing that they talk about here. So why don't we just kind of read that, the doctor's opinion, everybody there, XXV. And it sets up this thing. And we're going to pick up a bit of pace here, but we're just trying to get the foundation down. We go through this in great detail in the studies on, on uh, in the groups that we talked about. Our home group on Wednesday, we, we do probably, I, I think we do six days a week, we do wor- workshops, right, to help the newcomer better understand what's being presented in our basic text to get back to the language of Alcoholics Anonymous because we've really veered off of it. We've had a lot of different influences from other um, outside organizations that their ideas and, and their information has taken over the language of Alcoholics Anonymous. So our job is to get back to the language of Alcoholics Anonymous. It must be important Right, the terminology and understanding because they haven't changed it in four editions, nor are they going to in the next edition. So as a fellowship and a responsible member, our job is to reiterate what was so freely given to us and allowing us to have the life we live and to carry this message. Are we kind of agreed with that? Or is, right? So we need to find a basis of conversation that we all understand and that we all agree to. So and so the book starts with these, these ideas of presenting, so they're, they're, they're kind of saying, here's the basis of our conversation, we're going to build on this. Meaning, I, I, I went in the construction trade. So in high school, when I went into a classroom, and we were in, in the carpentry class, we learned certain terminology that we built on. Does that kind of make sense? When, when I went into the, the um, uh, welding shop to learn a bit of well, they had their own terminology and own understanding of certain things. Is that kind of, and same with every class you go to, they have their own understanding and term that they build on. But everybody needs to understand the basis if you're going to develop. Does that kind of make sense? And this is a textbook. So that means we need to understand the fundamental basis of this thing that we're going to do building blocks on. Because in the fifth step, they talk about is the work solid so far? Right? Are the stones properly in place? So it, it, it's kind of, it, it is a building block that we're going to hopefully live the rest of our lives on and, and develop a, as a way of life that enables us to, to live free from drinking and the insanity of the first drink. How many people find that appealing? How many people try your best and, and you know, how many, you know, so they're saying they have a recipe here. Okay. Doctor's opinion. This sets up the whole thing here. Go ahead. We of alcoholic astonists believe that the reader will be interested in the medical estimate of the plan of recovery described in this book. Convincing testimony must surely come from medical men who have had experience with the sufferings of our members and have witnessed our return to health. So this is the professionals who are dealing with who? These types of people. What types of people? Alcoholics. I don't know exactly what they're talking about. Right at this moment, because I'm just getting into the text. Having gone through it, I know exactly what they talk about now. But I need to see it. So this is a guy who is observing people who is afflicted with his illness. Do you see what's happening here? And he's going to give his findings on it and his observations on this thing before Alcoholics Anonymous or before this message got carried or before he witnessed it, what it was like. And what it was like after witnessing this thing and, and the results of from the, the medical profession. That's pretty wild when you think about that. When this thing was put together, we'll find out in 1934. Right? So let, let's read on to see what happens here. A well-known doctor, chief physician at a nationally prominent hospital specializing in alcoholic and drug addiction, gave Alcoholics Anonymous this letter. So, so we see that this guy's... It's actually a treatment center. You hear people say, oh, it wasn't a treatment center. It is a treatment center. He's specializing He's specializing in alcohol and drug addiction. He's not any kind of doctor. He's a chief physician. Right? This guy has some credibility behind him. He's going to say, this is my observations, my findings as a doctor. So he, he's doing his scientific, everything, medical. Everything. He's putting that all together and he's presenting it. To us, you see, is what kind of document would you call that? I don't. Know. Uh, my wife, when she had to go get her master, she had to put a, a document together to kind of 
Yeah, you're just leaving me hanging there, Joanne. Just gonna. I don't know. I don't know. A I don't thesis. Know. A the- there we go. Thank you. Somebody oh, just. I thought I, I thought there was something going over that the fan stopped in the background there oh. for a second. Okay. No, I was thinking. I was trying to think of the word thesis. So yeah. Thank you. So so you see what's happening? His findings. So it's pretty wild. Just the setup of this thing, the introduction of it. I know when I used to go through, I'd miss that whole thing. The setup of that. Right? Okay, let's see what he says. To whom it may concern, I have specialized in the treatment of alcoholism for many years. So this guy knows what he's talking about, right? In late 1934, I attended a patient who, though he had been a competent businessman of good earning capacity, was an alcoholic of a type I had come to regard as hopeless. Okay, so a lot of people would miss this, but he's talking about two different things here. He's talking about this person as a person, but yet they're afflicted with an illness. You see the two conversations happening here? They're not one and the same. It, kind of, it may kind of sound weird. This guy's a good guy, but he's suffering from this illness that doesn't allow him to, to fulfill the life that he looks like he's able to live. There's something else going on with him. He's also making a statement as somebody who specializes in the treatment of alcoholics and saying that he's come to regard him as hopeless. So for him, there is no known treatment. And this is the top guy in the country to see back in the early 1930s. And so what just finished happening in 1934, which is really interesting? Prohibition. (laughs) Right? And this guy's been in a treatment center for years. Anyways, I'll just kind of leave that at that. Right? Prohibition just ended. Okay, go ahead. In the course of his third treatment. Oh, wait a minute. In the course of how many treatments? Three. Three. We'll find out that this is one of the founders of Alcoholics Anonymous. In his third treatment. Third treatment. Not the first time he got help. Not the second time he got help. But the third time. So what was different the third time that wasn't present the first two times. He's going to make witness to this because he's offering these people a solution who come to his place, is he not? He specializes in alcohol and drug addiction. That means there's some form of treatment or some form of program that he put together to help the people that come to his facility seeking help. Is he not? Is it not? So they have something that seems to be working for a, a big masses of people, but then there's a group of people that are coming through his facility that he's not able to reach with his approach. Well, he's referring that his treatment doesn't work for a certain type that comes to regard as hopeless. And our, our friend here is obviously an alcoholic of this type. So what did he what did he acquire the third time that wasn't present the first two times? Do you want me to read from the paragraph? Oh, yeah. L- l- everybody's just waiting with anticipation. I see a couple people on the edge of their seats. So we better hurry up here. <laughs> Say it! Say it! No, go ahead. <laughs> As part of his rehabilitation, he commenced to present his conceptions to other alcoholics, impressing upon them that they must do likewise with still others. So uh, maybe I missed it. In, in the course of his third treatment, he acquired certain ideas, certain specific that well, wasn't of recovery. Yeah, that wasn't present the first two times. So as we went through this, we find out in Bill's story, those who went through it, what those ideas were that were presented to Ebby, right? And as we went through the doctor's opinion, he just expands on on these things. He lets us know the first symptom in alcoholism, what makes us different than other people. And the solution to that is entire abstinence. But he goes on to say that there's something fundamentally different with these certain types of people that are beyond human aid. That frothly emotional appeal doesn't suffice. So the stuff we hear in meetings don't work for people like this. Just don't drink. Think it through. Surrender. Let it go. Just go to meetings. We hear that works for some people, but it don't work for these types of people. What types of people? People who are beyond human aid. And he kind of goes on to say that these people keep on drinking again. In other words, they keep on doing an act against their own will. Regardless of how much they don't want to drink, they keep on drinking because they don't have a solution to their human dilemma. So the idea, he talks about the idea of drinking returns. 
because there's no sense of ease and comfort to relieve the human perplexities, right? And so what did we used to use to deal with the human perplexities? Anybody need a hint? Are we in the right meeting? A drink. How many people experience the promises here as the result of a drink? You'll know a new freedom and you'll come on the sense of ease and comfort the followed by 911, but that's the consequences. Right? We never said the consequences. We said the sense of ease and comfort. Because if you can get away with drinking without consequence, how many people would still be drinking here? We, uh, right? We'd, uh, it'd be a different meeting. <laughs> right? We'd be getting together. Hey, did you try this new brew? It'd, it'd be that meeting, right? And then it would be about half a meeting before, anyways. So we see it was the consequence. So he goes on to talk about, and we've read it and kind of gone through it. We, we're going to pick up some speed here. But what he talks about when you go through that, the only thing that works for these certain types, what types? The alcoholic who's beyond human aid. What makes them beyond human aid? He'll get into that later. But he says the only thing that seems to save these people from themselves, and the terminology is very important. He says an entire psychic change, a change within their psyche, right? Until this change happens, little or nothing can be done for these people. But he also witnessed, on the other hand, as strange as it may seem to those that don't understand, that once the psychic changes occurred, the very same person who seemed doomed, and he goes on to explain, had very little control, right, or able to easily face life. I'm paraphrasing there. And then he goes on to give two examples of people who are beyond human aid, got sold on the ideas contained in this book, and both of them recovered. One had grave emotional mental disorders, and the other one was an alcoholic beyond the human. So what's the purpose of Bill's story then? So the doctor kind of describes symptoms of what makes one an alcoholic, what the solution to that was. And until that solution happened, there was very little hope of their recovery. But once this thing happened, these people recovered. So what would be the purpose of Bill's story? Give us an, an actual example of someone suffering from the symptoms of alcoholism. So, but how many people here read Bill's story and try to find yourself in it? How many people got told that? Come on, you can be honest here. That's what I got told. Read Bill's story, try to find yourself. But the purpose of Bill's story is to step back and see what alcoholism looks like in somebody's life. So it reiterates what they talk about and how it works. What we used to be like, not what it was like. What we used to be like, what happened, and what we're like now. So when we go through Bill's story, we've seen what he was like and his inability to get sober based on his own experience with alcoholism. Yes or no? Yes, we see repeated examples through Bill's story on what, what doesn't work as well, right? Like that, that clear self-reliance, that being able to keep ourselves sober with our own experience. Fear didn't work. Self-knowledge didn't work. Um, everything that he applied eventually failed and he, he, he drank again. Um, and the purpose of Bill's story is to give us um, an example. It's not necessarily that I, as a middle-aged woman in 2021, would have anything in common with a middle-aged affluent white dude from 1935. But we drank the same. And our inability to keep ourselves sober was exactly the same. I can relate on that level 100%. And so we see on page six, right? Then he ends up in treatment. Page uh, seven, he ends up in treatment for the first time. But we see the digression here, right? The remorse and the horror and the hopelessness of the next morning were unforgettable. His inability to stay sober, he ends up in treatment. And then as we go through here, we see he ends up in treatment again. And he talks about no words can tell of the loneliness and despair. I've met my match. I've been overwhelmed. Alcohol was my master. So he does a total, if for lack of better words there, he does a total surrender, total acceptance, total hitting bottom, all this stuff, right? But leaves treatment and drinks again. So what's missing from Bill's life is this solution that they talked about. He is a, acutely aware of the problem, but what's missing from his life is the solution. So it gives you, people give you the impression if you do step one, you'll be able to stay sober. No, the confirmation of step one is another drink. Because if step one could keep you sober, then it would be a one-step process, wouldn't it? Step one, 
I have a problem. Step two, just don't do that. Step three, repeat. So we see that there's more to this than this. That's why we need a text to kind of direct us because left to our own thinking, we hope that's the truth. Bill saw he could not take so much as one drink. Did that keep him sober? I made a lot of sweet promises in the past. This time I meant business and everybody around him knew he did. Did that keep him sober? So what was the change is when he actually met with Ebby sitting at the table drinking. Ebby called him. He didn't call Ebby. He went through this process, which is really cool. And this is one of the most fundamentals that is changing within our fellowship that we need to get back to. And if you kind of read Working With Others, the basis, what, what kind of helped Bill experience what Ebby was experienced was in the selling of the idea of God. It was the idea that there was a power that he could get access to that would create the change. Through what? Through a course of action that he would experience the same thing Ebby did. Right? And that was it. It was the idea that there was something greater than him and it would be possible for him to experience this and him to recover if he did the same thing Ebby did. That's why he said, why don't you choose your own conception after he explained the solution that he did, not before. Now we're trying to tell people, here, choose your own conception before we explain our understanding. We need to explain what our solution is, how we see it and our experience of it. And you could choose your own conception of what? Of our understanding or our experience. It's after, not before. Right? If people are going, oh, I have a hard time with this thing. Well, then you haven't been through we agnostics. Because we agnostics is designed for three types of people. Right? The atheist, the agnostic, and the true believer all suffer from the same thing. Anybody want to guess what that is? That whatever current solution they have is not working. Right? And that's why working with others, they say, we don't care what your convictions are. The main bottom line is, are you willing to believe that there is a power greater than you? They don't define it, but they talk about it's something that governs us within as our solution that we get access through a, a course of action, right? So we're all governed by something. Belief system, are we not worship all these other things? We all have something that we need to reallocate it in a way that works toward our betterment instead of our demise, and Bill was there, right? And so when he went through this thing with his friend, that was also the big difference, that the third time in treatment, his friend walked him through a course of action, which we would call a sponsor. What course of action did Ebby walk him through? The exact same course of action he went through. And what did Bill have when he left that? He had two things. One, he had a connection with his power, right? His creator, right? That he was to check his newfound thinking with as the purpose of the steps. The second thing he had was a recipe, that he was able to implement that enabled him to move past the places where he used to create failure in the past. It was a recipe for life, right? Life nearly drove him back to drinking. How many people read that in this story? What would save the day? Work with other people. What type of work in the carrying of this message would save himself and give the next person some hope? So here we are in 2021 with the same recipe and same ideas, but expanded on so it's more palatable for people like us because we're genius type minds, right? We're the only people that would argue over a life jacket as we're drowning. <laughs> I don't like the color. <laughs> Where's that made? <laughs> Right? And and you think about it because it's true. Because they say, well, do you want our solution? I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I want to die of this thing. You know, like it sounds like pretty drastic stuff, right? Like 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 you have two alternatives here: get a bit of help or or die. Oh, how long do I got to choose? <laughs> right? Hello, what? <laughs> Any anybody find that funny? Like looking back at the time, it wasn't funny. It was like oh, I don't know. 
the rest of my life like living like you people? Nothing appealing about that, right? Like, we thought it was like a death sentence coming to Alcoholics. I'm like, you ever see new people? It's like the march, the green mile. <laughs> Coming in. Oh, it's like dragging your dog to get neutered. <laughs> you're coming to your first meeting and you're going to like it. <laughs> and, you, and you sit there. How many people remember? You look around and say, oh, what has my life come to? Look at these losers. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. What did I do? Right? You use that to get out of the situation you're in. How many people remember saying that? I'm going to AA, I'll go to AA, I'll get up. And you kind of, you can't take it back. It, it's kind of like there was no other door for you. You had to think, how am I going to get out of this? Anybody been there? How many people? I've got to get out of this. What am I going to, how am I going to get out of this one? Boy, this is serious. Oh my God. I'll go to AA. Oh my God. <laughs> Everybody around you does the wave. <laughs> okay. Joanne, you're supposed to reel me in. <laughs> so, so anyways, so, so when we go through Bill's story, we see that happening. And so there's a couple things that are happening in Bill's story now. Not only is Bill experiencing a new experience, everybody around him is. Bill's not the only one going through a transition here. Everybody around him is. So when the book talks about the promises, most people talk about as is as, as a singular experience. But if you're going through this and you're experiencing this as they have experienced it, the first people who actually experience the promises is the people around you. Family, friends, loved ones, kids, society, police, the neighbors, right? Right? When you get sober, your neighbors start to change, right? They start getting more relaxed, right? The security system's kind of like anybody who know anybody live in the same place that they, they used to drink in? You notice the more sober you get, the more the neighborhood starts to relax. <laughs> Especially when you're not parking up on their lawn anymore. And it, like it's kind of interesting. Nothing worse going in the wrong house on the wrong street, right? Okay, so. Anyways, where am I? So Bill talks about this recipe that he incorporates in his life. And that's the same thing here he talks about on page 15. So let, let's go. Let, let's talk to him. And this is what this whole thing is about. The rest of the book expands on these things. It expands on the problem and the understanding. It expands on the solution and the experience. So a lot of people get caught up in the mechanics of this thing. Anybody here? I do steps 10, 11, and 12. I do this, that, I do this. Nowhere does it say to do that. It's all about the experience. Right? Bill talks about the experience. The book talks about the experience. Are you experiencing this? This is how I get the experience, but it's not the mechanics of doing the steps. It's the experience the steps get me. He talks about that at the bottom of page 14 here. He doesn't talk about doing 10, 11, and 12 every day or a particular set of prayers. He talks about it. On his experience, my friend had emphasized the absolute necessity of demonstrating these principles in all of my affairs. Particularly, it was it imperative to work with others as he had worked with me. Faith without works was dead. Like that's, that's him talking about the experience, the daily experience of it. This is what was going to be necessary of me. Not getting into uh, point form things that need to be completed 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at, at night. He's talking about an experience all throughout the day, each day. And what's really wild is, where is he when he comes to this understanding and this experience? He's still in the, in the treatment center. Yeah. While he lies in the hospital bed, he started thinking how he can help others. Most of us have been around here for years and we don't get to that stage. Yeah. <laughs> right? We get told we're the most important person when we come to a meeting. We It spends years for us to get rid of that idea. <laughs> 20 years later, yeah, I'm still, they told me when I first got here I was the most important person here and I still think that. I'm yeah. glad you're all here for me. <laughs> you ever hear that? I'm glad you're all here for me. Well, yeah, I'll what, 24 and I'll pass it Yeah, on. pass it on. Like, you know, <laughs> th thank you guys for being here for me. Well, when are you going to be here for us? Meaning, when are you getting into second stage recovery? That's what, this, that's what Bill's talking about here. Sec, first stage recovery is all about us. Second stage recovery is about everybody but us, which in turn gives us everything that we could ever hope for and dream for. And that's what Bill's but, talking about here. Constant thought of others needed to become the normal state of things. And people go, I'm in service. I put my chair away. You're, you're in self-service still. 
Service. Easy, big guy. Yeah, sorry, easy. Oh, easy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for reeling me in. I told her it would be worried. You better reel me in. So, so what? what is it? To be of service, and that's what Bill's talking about here. What what is our responsibility as AA members who've been around to be in? They talk about here. We we get rid of certain words because they don't suit us, right? They said love and service is, no, to fit ourselves. To fit ourselves, meaning it takes effort. Somebody's got to be there to hook up those meetings. Somebody got to do the Zoom. Somebody got to keep the light. Somebody's got to put the effort in that you used to enjoy as a member before you became responsible. Did it not? Well, the, the actually AA Comes of Age talks at great length about deflation of self at death, right? That's not, um, you know, five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night. That's the deflation of self at death to fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God and to those around us. That's that's saying something. Affliction at death, right? I can't fit into where I can be of maximum service if I'm thinking about all that I need and all that I want and all that I think will fix me. Um, and I can't fit myself to be of maximum service if I also in the same breath think I am the shittiest person in the room as well. Um, to fit ourselves to be of maximum service, that's deflation of self at death. There is only known one way to experience deflation of self at death, and that's through this program of recovery. That is what the steps is about. And that's where the responsibility comes in. Right. I am responsible. We we think, oh, it's about 12. It's so much more than that. Because it takes so much more to keep the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous in sync and, and to ensure that it will be here for those yet to come here. That, that our loved ones or people we know will have a place to come to and that we'll keep intact what was so freely given to us. That is our greatest responsibility. That's why they put this text together. That's why they put the traditions and the service all in, in thing. And everybody gets in these different areas. So when do I get involved? Well, when, how better do you want to feel? How do right? you, when do you get involved? You get involved at day one. When, like that's day one <laughs> and it's so easy it's like you know when the zoom happened a part of me went oh like like the financial part as a member to contribute like it took a bit of effort to to do that to to navigate through the, to get that stupid like i'm not very uh computer savvy to get that paypal thing happening to get the credit card or to donate money so i got some people who send me checks that I put in my account so I could put in in the PayPal thing. Like, I am responsible. Like, it's, it may sound kind of weird, but that goes in turn to help those in so many different ways, right? And I think, what's 20 bucks or what's 10 bucks? Well, as a member, I need to, like, in, as a, in my house, practicing these principles, that's what he talks about here, right? Let's read this, and it'll kind of go with what we're talking about. Go ahead. Which, which page are you looking at? Read 14. My wife... My friend, do that. That's worth reading again. My friend had emphasized the absolute necessity of demonstrating these principles in all my affairs. My friend, my sponsor, my guide. He's talking about Evie. Yep. It's the same kind of thing. What we, our terminal today is my friend, my guide, my mentor, somebody I'm looking for for guidance. A part of their responsibility is to carry this message and these responsibilities. Are you fluent in the traditions? What are you doing in service? You look at all my sponsees, all of them are in service. If you're not in some form of service, I don't sponsor you anymore. It's not just a part of our responsibility. It's our primary purpose. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah. so as a part of my good sponsorship is so if if the fellowship is lacking in service, that means it's lacking in good sponsorship. That's what it's reflected on is sponsorship. Even, even worse yet, it's a, a fellowship of men and women who are not practicing these principles in all of their affairs. And if you are seriously as alcoholic as we were, that can only carry on for a period of time before you will end up drinking again. You end up doing these things in reverse, right? The the result of going through this process, the result of coming into a relationship with something greater than yourself, the byproduct of that should be um, the want to have a constant thought of others, the want and the gratitude level enough to want to give up your time 
in service to others. So this is the wheel that we talk about. And anybody see the logo with, with the circle around it? That's the conversation. I, I call it my connection to source. And within that is all the responsibilities that I'm able to face because I'm connected. Right? So my real source is, is contingent on my relationship. The byproduct of that or the demonstration of that or the uh, how that exhibits itself is my service to other people. And Bill is going to talk about, so this next couple paragraphs is the whole essence of what this whole book is about in order to experience it and to achieve it the same thing. There's so much depth and weight here that a lot of people would read through it and just miss it. But this is basically what the rest of the book is designed for, right? So Bill understands what the problem is, right? He understands what the solution is. He's gone through a course of action. This is the second half of how it works. Anybody ever hear how it works here? The second half talks about, right, what does it talk about? It says, it says, uh, um, what does it say? Here, the second half, of, uh, the principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. It didn't say the steps we have set down, the principles. The connection, the understanding, this relationship, this is what it looks like. And this, and when you look at our own life and our own recovery, does it look like this? And if it doesn't look like this, then we're headed for trouble. That's what the book talks about, right? We're headed for trouble, right? And let's see what it says here. My friend, let's start with there again. My friend had emphasized the absolute necessity of demonstrating these principles in all my affairs. Not some of them, all of them. Particularly, was it imperative to work with others as he had worked with me? Imperative. Is that an important word? Imperative. Yes. It means necessary. So you, so you could do it imperative is work with others or be impaired. You choose. <laughs> no, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> if faith without works was dead, he said. And how appallingly true for the alcoholic. For if an alcoholic failed to perfect and enlarge his spiritual life through work and self-sacrifice... With others, he could not survive the certain trials and low spots ahead. So, how many people have been sober here a little while? How many people know this to be true? The only thing that saves you from you was was the go work finding a new person to work with, picking up your ass, bringing it to a meeting, and finding a person looking for what you're complaining about, right? Because a lot of us, what we're complaining about was totally beyond our comprehension at one point. A point in time, wasn't it? Come on, right? <laughs> now we're like, like sometimes I pause and look at my life and said, "Really, holy shit! How did I get this? Where? How did I get here? By doing this? How do I keep this? By doing this? How do I lose it? By stopping it? It's a recipe, right? There's a recipe. When we stop doing this, go ahead. If he did not work, he would surely drink again. Oh. And Whoa. And if he drank, he would surely die. This is serious stuff for us. How many people is this serious for here? So, so what ensures this is carrying this message so other people might, whether I agree with certain concepts or not, it doesn't matter. I'm not carrying my message, my ideas. I'm presenting this so they can decide for themselves how they're going to do it. This is the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. If they want to know personally what I... My how I do these things or my beliefs, I'll tell them, but I won't tell them before I take them through this. Does that kind of make? Does that kind of make sense? What I'm doing is carrying the message as it was carried to me, as it was carried to Bill, and what Bill is doing is carried this message so we all get to enjoy it in 2021. It's pretty powerful stuff, right? Go ahead. My wife and I abandoned, I'm sorry, then faith would dead, be dead indeed. With us, it is just like that. My wife and I abandoned ourselves with enthusiasm to the idea of helping other alcoholics to a solution of their problems. It was fortunate for my old business associate that's remained skeptical for a year and a half. <laughs> for, for a year and a half. We get pissed off when people still remember something from two months ago. Yeah, I've been sober for two months. Haven't you yeah. forgiven yet? <laughs> Look at my chip. Why are you still worried about whether I'm drinking or not? Because you've been drinking for the last 15 years with those chips. I totaled your car three months ago. <laughs> Get over it already. <laughs> How long did it take for some of the people around you to stop hugging you and 
do the sniff test. Oh, give me a hug. <laughs> or they're really concentrating on your words to see if you got that slur or not. Anybody? Come on. Skeptics. I don't know why they're so skeptical. Because how many times? Right? Go ahead. Uh, it was fortunate for my old business associates remained skeptical for a year and a half, during which I found little work. I was not too well at the time and was plagued by waves of self-pity and resentment. This so, sometimes nearly drove me back to drink, but I soon found that when all other measures failed, work with another alcoholic would save the day. The human dilemma. It's not his alcoholism he's suffering from here. It's the human problem. We can just draw attention to something that a principle that not a lot of people practice anymore when we're having life and rough going, when we're having problems, when we're having difficulties, because we're not guaranteed a life without problems or difficulties. Um, Bill suggests what he would do in the midst of those difficulties. And it's not a practice often, it's not a principle often practiced anymore. Uh, when we are having a problem in present day, we do everything we can to solve our own problem. It is the last item on the list to do what Bill suggests next, where he says, many times I have gone to my old hospital in despair. I'm talking to a man there. I would be amazingly lifted up and set on my feet. It is designed for living that works in rough going. I talk to a lot of people that think that the last thing they need in their moment of despair is to go and work with another alcoholic. And we are here to suggest that that is the first thing we should be doing when life is in despair. Yeah, how many people would have come up with that idea? I'm not doing very good. Well, go find someone to work. No, I got problems. I got to go home and think about this. There's got to be six people I could phone to talk about this. There's got to be somebody to co-sign my shit because I'm not phoning my sponsor. So I'll phone four other new people to complain about me, and then we'll get a whole party going. And anybody well, because, We've all been guilty of it. We've all been yeah, guilty of it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> And then you phone your sponsor. I'm not feeling good. Ooh, how long have you been like this? Four days now. You've been like this for four days. Yes. Why are you phoning me now? Because there's no one left that wants to hear me anymore. <laughs> Go find someone to work with. What? What? Go be of service. Go help somebody. What? Then you go help somebody. My God, that feels good. And then you think it's your idea. <laughs> Up there, go ahead. So anyways... This is it, right? This this is a sum. It's a design for work that it's a design for living that works in rough going. And how do I get this design? That's what the rest of the book is dedicated toward. Our greatest responsibility is to carry this message, is to guide people through this thing. And and then one day you could have a life beyond anything you could ever imagine. And when does that start? It starts right now, right here, with the idea that it's possible. Thanks, Joanne. Both on that note, um, on page 89, that practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. It works when other activities fail. This is our 12th suggestion. Carry this message to other alcoholics. You can help when no one else can. You can secure the confidence when others fail. Remember, they are very ill. Life will take on new meaning. To watch people recover, to see them help others, to watch loneliness vanish, to see a fellowship grow up about you. You have a host of friends, to have a host of friends. This is an experience you must not miss. We know you will not want to miss it. Frequent contact with newcomers and with each other is the bright spot of our lives. Tony, thank you for being a part of the bright spot of my life. And thank you for coming and doing service here at our district's gratitude day. And thank you for everybody who showed up for the Big Book Study Workshop and allowed us to be of service today. Uh, we love each and every one of you and hope to see you at one of the Keystone Group's um, Big Book Study Workshops or perhaps in our closed meeting on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. I did put the meeting ID in the chat. Um, and if you, if you so wish to participate, we're going to close it up with the serenity prayer. Unless, of course, Tony, you have anything else you'd like to add. And, and a really remarkable page that follows up on, on the experience we're talking about with somebody else's experience is 251. But you can read that on your own. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, yeah, it was awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Let's pray. God. 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 Grant me the God. strength, God. Me strength to, accept to accept the things, things I cannot change. change. Courage to change the things, things I can. can. And the wisdom to know the difference. And the wisdom to know the difference. May the force be with you. Live long and prosperous.